What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 19 of Gotta Watch Them All. I am one of your hosts, Ken Pescator. I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Adam Tuttle. Adam, how are you? I'm doing awesome, fantastic, stupendous, superb, phenomenal. All right, so I'm right there with you. This has been the best week of Pokemon Go since launch, in my opinion. And I am on this. I am just riding this 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 high of Pokemon Go. It's crazy right now. I want to go out and play right now. It's it's crazy. Yes, my gym just got taken over. Not even like a half hour ago, my brother texted me and he's like, "The gym's down" because he can see it from his house. Uh, he's like, "The gym's down. It's red." <laughs> and then he texts me five minutes later and goes, "It's yellow again." All right. So this this week has been an, an absolutely a massive week for Pokemon Go. We we had. We were talking about it in last week's episode, but the gyms went down, and we were kind of still in this speculation phase as to when things were going to come back online and functionality was going to start coming back to the game. And, you know, we were all speculating five or seven days, but before we could even really settle on how long it was going to actually take, it things started coming back online. The gyms came back online. The following day, the raids came online. App, the, the rollout has been, you know, for the most part, pretty smooth, and uh, I, I'm, I'm just so incredibly psyched about how fast it came from them taking the gyms offline to having brand new gym rework and raids live in a matter of days. It's awesome. I've been I, I've been on a bender playing like as much as possible since since the update hit. Like I. I I'm just, I'm absolutely, if I wasn't obsessed with the game before, I mean, now it's just like, I'm so head over heels again. It's, I feel like I've fallen in love all over again, but I never really fell out of love. But I'm just like, it, it's, I'm so incredibly re-engaged. Like, I'm, I'm just so into the meta now. It's fantastic. I'm so excited about it. Yeah, and then having the the opportunity to, like, you put your Pokemon first, and then it's the first one that gets knocked out. So it's all that strategizing. Like, the second they went live, I pulled right off the road and I was like, all right, I'm going to the first gym, put a cloister in. And I, it's like, you know, hit or miss. It's, it's there. It's at the gym. It's the first one. It's going to go down first. Uh, not even within like 20 minutes, somebody else had already taken it. It's so fun having to like, you know, kind of relearn what all the mechanics are and how everything works. And, you know, I, I've just like the things I really love about this update is like the whole community aspect, like obviously that's the goal, you know, that was Niantic's goal. But I think what, what has actually happened now that may have just been like a secondary goal for Niantic was it's just people are now getting a little bit deeper with their knowledge of the game and the way the mechanics work and IVs and things like that, where that was kind of a, an afterthought before. Now that the player base seems to be reinvigorated and now they're like, look, you know, appraising every single Pokemon and really finding the best Pokemon and it's not just about collecting. Now they have, there's actual incentive to go to the gyms and, and to start doing things. I'm just, it's just, I, I'm so fired up. I want to go play right now. <laughs> right. And I, and I love that all the gyms now are Pokestop. So you can, you know, spin the photo disc and get some extra Absolutely. rewards. And Absolutely. if the battle takes too long or it takes enough time, you can spin it twice. Yeah. And it, what's, you know, I like the fact that, you know, ultimately the, the gyms that you hit the most will really become your home turf, you know, because you're going to get benefits and you're going to level up those gyms. So I really dig that. I think that's a really cool thing. And, and, and it just promotes the whole turf war thing, you know, with people coming in and taking your home gym and it just has a little bit more, you know, a little bit more emotion behind it if that gym gets taken down. So I'm just, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm so excited. And, and, then they have the raid system. So the raid system has rolled out, and uh, it originally said it was for level 35 and up, right? And that kind of alienated a lot of people because, you know, 35 yeah, is Yeah, I was kind out of, of it. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty elite level. And the following, uh, I think it was like even 12 hours later or something like that, they dipped it down to, tw to 31, and now it's down to 25. So I'm pretty, and which is awesome because my son is 25. So we were all able to, to do a raid today together, which was awesome. I, I can imagine this going all the way down to level five. You know, as soon as you can pick a team, you're you're good to to play in a in a in a raid. I can imagine that happening. So it, it's it is once this opens up, it's just going to get that much better with you know finding people and meeting people and the opportunity to be playing in the same physical space as other people. 
But I did notice something very interesting. Melissa and I had a very rare date night last night, and uh, we decided to spend it playing Pokemon Go. So we're driving around, and we're all excited for raids. And uh, the irony behind this is Melissa was level 30, and we thought that the cap was still 31 when it was actually down to 25. So she did, like, two back-to-back lucky eggs with evolutions, and we grinding so hard, and she finally hits level 31, and we're like, all right, we can do raids now. And we drive to, like, an ex- exceptionally c- congested area, and there's no raids in sight. And then we come to learn that raids are actually time-sensitive, and they only run from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. currently. Hopefully that will change. But... It was a total bummer. We were like so fired up to do a bunch of raids and, and we couldn't because they were turned off. But we were talking earlier. Maybe this is Niantic's way of saying, Hey, we don't necessarily want a group of 20 people congregating, you know, at your town's post office at midnight. You know, it's like I Which can makes imagine. Sense. It does. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I can imagine that might be what's influencing that decision. Or if like it's next to somebody's house and. You know, there's, there's 30 people outside, like, um, I'm going to call the police. There's 30 people outside of my house. Yeah, because there, there was a couple raids today where cars were pulling up. Like, as we were, as I was waiting for the, the timer to go down, like, cars were pulling up. I'm like, man, this is really a thing. Like, this is still, you know, people are starting to come out of the woodwork. So it was it was really cool to, to be a part of that, the, the relaunch of this whole system, because the people started coming out in droves. It was just... It was just yeah, fantastic. my first my first raid was Saturday, and I saw I saw it said active raid going on now. So I was like, "Kids, Jessica, we are we are pulling over. I'm 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 doing this right now." <laughs> and it was a level two muck, and I'm like, "All right." I pull in, and there's there's three cars ahead of me that are just pulling in, and I'm like, "Oh man!" And this and it's like a dog park, but it's all the the parking lots spots were filled, and I was like, "Oh man." There must be tons of people here either walking their dog or playing Pokemon. So, and lo and behold, I, you know, I'm sitting there. Nobody joined my, my, uh, my group, but I just, I beat it by myself. I didn't, I wasn't sure that I could do it, but I just wanted to participate. But I ended up catching it. It was like a 1502, best it can be, HP and best it can be. So I was like, awesome. How many mucks have you seen prior to that? One. See, that's what makes this so so much cooler. Than, and I hatched you know, a Grimer, but that's it. Melissa d- still doesn't have a, a Pokedex Tyranitar, so we're like on the prowl. That's what we were hoping. We're like, we're going to find one. We're going to get a couple pe- people together, and we're going to actually get this, and it'll be a Pokedex Pokemon for you. Uh, but we haven't we haven't seen anything too big or big, you know, in heavy duty. We've seen a couple level threes, and we haven't even seen a level four. So I haven't haven't been able to take part in that yet. But I tried soloing a level three and it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, I've I've tried. I mean, I've seen a level four Alakazam, and I think I'm a champ. But my friend texted me and he's like, "Hey, I need your help. There's a level four ride on." And he and later after I told him I couldn't make it because I had just gotten home, he's like, "The four of us couldn't couldn't handle it. We needed you." And I'm like, <laughs> "That's so awful. Like, I didn't know that you couldn't just." You know, I thought four people would definitely be enough, but well, then I like when you're in, about to engage the raid, it actually se- it gives you a recommended group size, and you know, I'm sure they blow it up out of proportion a bit, but I mean, they were saying like 13, 14 people. It's like, you know, obviously you're not going to need that that kind of head count to complete the raid. Otherwise, they would, you know, the, they wouldn't it wouldn't stick. The people wouldn't continue to follow up on it because you're not going to be able to get that many people together, right? But you know, I think five. You know, if you have five strong players that know that know how to you know choose the appropriate Pokemon and move sets, and I think be five able to people, dodge, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's it's challenging because you don't get the flash prior to the attack. So, you know, dodging those charge moves is exceptionally difficult. And you know, if you're some of these bigger Pokemon, you know, you're going to get one shotted. You know, with with these charge moves, you're just done. So yep. it does make it pretty challenging, but. It's so much fun. It is just, it's so satisfying. It's just, yeah, even, cool, you know, cool seeing them so big, too. Yeah, even on my way home, I saw a Snorlax. It was like 22,000. I was like, there's no way. It had just hatched and just started. And I'm like, there's nobody around in sight. So I was like, I'm just, I'm just passing. Yeah. And th- we were talking about this offline, but, 
you know, I can already see the, you know, people going from spending their coins and ultimately their cash, you know, from shifting it from buying incubators and lucky eggs over to these premium raid passes because if you I, win, that's 3000 experience right there. Not even for the experience, like, this is the irony, not even for the experience if, as far as experience points, but just for the, the gaming experience of playing the raid, it's so much fun. So, I, I like, I mean, I already I already sank money into into buying a bunch of raid passes just so I have them, but it, it's, you know, I could see that being a consistent purchase, and, like, that's going to be a good revenue stream for Niantic. Like, I'm all for it. Like, you know, yay, capitalism. But it, yeah. it's... You know that that's good for the game. Like it's, it'll be a good measure of how engaged people are with the meta, because I just don't think that the the meta really, really, uh, you know, drew a good amount of people and players the way it was previously. You know, and that now all of a sudden people are just they're into it and, you know, starting to ask the questions. Well, who who is the best defender? Who is the best attacker? And, you know, once you get people, you know, flipping that switch from being, you know, sort of on the casual side of things to getting interested in core mechanics and core statistics, then they become the diehards and, you know, then you got, you really got your hooks in them. Yep. But I'm enjoying it so much. I, I can't wait to see what happens. I mean, there's a couple of weird things that I don't like. I don't like that. I don't like the way the, the actual mechanics are to feed berries. I think it's kind of awkward to swipe between Pokemon, and I've a couple times where I'm trying to swipe between Pokemon and I end up feeding a berry to, like, a Pokemon that I've already given a bunch of berries to, so the diminishing return, you know, is is, yeah. is crappy. I don't like that when you choose, like, if I, you know, I try to give up all my Nanab berries, but you, you drop a Nanab berry in, and then you go to the next Pokemon, and it defaults you back to the Raspberry. So they got to change that. I wish, personally, that poke like the gym stops you could actually get with the pokemon plus yes yeah yeah i'm i wonder if that'll ever wonder if that'll ever change like i don't know i don't know why it w- why it wouldn't but i did notice that as well too yeah cuz they changed poke stops to gyms like i've seen that so it's like just don't take the functionality away it's you know maybe it, it'll have something to do with because I don't know. The, I was going to say the team bonus, you know, because it's applying your, your, you know, a bonus to it. But I don't know. I don't know what would prevent it. So hopefully that'll change. That'll make things just more convenient. All right. So Pokemon Go is on, you know, on the charge. We're, we know we'll definitely keep an eye on, you know, what happens. And then we have, you know, we're we're less than a month away from Go Fest in Chicago, which, you know, I just can't wait to see what happens there. I mean, it's got to be legendaries. You know, the the raid system is the perfect way to deliver it. So. It's gonna have. It's gonna be regionals and legendaries. Is uh, that's that's my bet for what's gonna be going down at, at GoFest Chicago. Yeah, they said you know stay tuned because there's gonna be more stuff for people that didn't get to go. So hopefully that means raid bosses will be different. Yeah. Or or they might have. Yeah, I mean, like you said, legendary birds might be the raid. Like we might finally see a level five um, raid, if you will. Right. So you're going to need that more people. Yeah. I mean, if if the level four ones are tough with a group of five or six, like, you know, I can only imagine the legendary. But when Silf Road did the APK mine, they found uh, legendary raid passes as in the code. So that'll be interesting because I think that's what they'll potentially distribute at GoFest, which will allow the players to have access to the legendary raids, you know, and blocking the spoofers out. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that happens or if that's what they're going to be giving the people that can't make go fest, you know, but still want them to be, you know, take part in the celebration. Now there was a great, um, trainer tips video that went up of them doing their first raid and they're, they have like a group of five or six people and they, they get to the gym, they're enter the lobby and within like 20 seconds, the lobby fills up to 20 people. And they're looking around and they're like, all right, there's only five or six people here. You know, clearly these are all spoofers and they start scrolling through the names. And one of the people in the, in the room in the lobby is FSU, who's like, you know, bullseye, you know, hacker, you know, pro, you know, educates the public on how to cheat the game on YouTube. He, he happened to be in that room, uh, with them, which I thought was brutally ironic. 
uh, since it's like trainer tips of reversal or soap, anti-cheating and anti, you know, botting spoofing. Totally ironic that he was in the room, but the, the legendary raid pass might be the key to them locking out spoofers from the legendary raids. So it'll be interesting to see how it rolls out, but I, I hope they give us something. I mean, if they make legendaries available to everybody or at least the chance of encountering that, that would be insane. All right, so we'll keep an eye on Pokemon Go. You know, we'll follow the news. We'll, you know, check out, keep, stay tuned to the social media. I'll post up anything. If, uh, if Niantic has any blog posts, I'll make sure we share them out everywhere. Uh, there's so much going on. I can, I could go on forever and, you know, talk for an hour about Pokemon Go right now because I'm just souped up <laughs> about it. Let's jump over to Pokemon, Pokemon Center. Center. Yay. The happiest place on earth next to Disney. <laughs> you know what? And it was funny because I was having this conversation with a, a Disney freak fr- friend of mine. My, my family is hardcore Disney freak. So, you know, now that Sun and Moon, the animated series is on Disney XD, it'll be interesting to see if, any Pokemon merchandise penetrates into Disney stores or Disney parks or Disney in any capacity because the show is exclusively in the States on Disney XD channel. That would be interesting. Can you imagine going to like a Disney park and there's a Pokemon presence? I'd be like, what? Yeah. Right. And then the next thing they get a Pokemon park and well, (laughs) you know, the Mario, the super Nintendo park is happening. You know, super Nintendo, super Mario park is happening at universal. So, I just want to give, bring back the, the, the mega Pokemon Center, like Japan style. Like, give me just a big, giant Pokemon Center store. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy playing, playing there and just going there and, you know, hire me as a janitor on, on weekends. <laughs> <laughs> but there's uh, some cool stuff on Pokemon Center this week. Um, continuing with the trend of really cool and well designed clothing items. Uh, they came out with something called the Dragonite Sighting Collection. And uh, you were really into this one. But T-shirt, hoodie, socks, uh, a couple couple plushes that they've always had. They lumped in there and a uh, you know nice drinking glass, a tumbler. But awesome, awesome Dragonite art. Yeah, I really enjoy the um, the black and gray like scheme to it all. It's not in your face. It doesn't scream Pokemon. Right. But for any diehard fan, like you'll know what it is. Exactly. It, it's it is definitely super clean and it's it's monochromatic. There's like a, a heather gray style shirt and hoodie, uh, and the socks with just one solid color black, um, printing with a classic classic you know outline of Dragonite and a really cool, uh, kind of just this pattern of like all Gen One silhouettes kind of behind it. It's just very clean. The socks are awesome too. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go for the socks. I like like I I think one day I'm just gonna drop like a hundred bucks and just stock up on on all different new socks and just throw out my 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 plain regular Hanes socks and yeah. just re, re, completely redo my sock drawer with all Pokemon stuff because these socks they just keep getting cooler. Um, and real quick, we'll touch on uh, two other things that were that popped up on um, on Pokemon Center. They are two very, very high-end uh, figures that are on pre-order right now. Uh, one is the Nendoroid. Um, I've seen other other figures. You know, they're, I think they're like maybe three or four inches. So they're small figures, uh, but exceptionally detailed. And uh, they came out with a Lily uh, and Cosmog figure. It's on pre-order. It's like 50 bucks for this tiny little figure. Uh, but when you look at it... It, it's like chibi style and it's just ridiculously cute and it looks like a living cartoon. Um, so very, very cool. But 50 bucks, I don't know. But I guess if you're a hardcore figure collector, you know, it's it's, it's just very, very well done. And to follow up with that, there is a another figure, another Lillian Cosmog figure. This one is $85. And yeah, eight inch figure. It comes <laughs> out steep. next year. It comes out in March of 2018. And the the images that they have on Pokemon Center are of like a unpainted cast, you know, like an unfinished figure. And it, it even says in the description in the description that you know we'll we'll update you with better images once they come. So like this is that early in production that they have to put these production you know samples up. But this one looks exceptionally detailed. Like this one looks you know it looks like an eighty five dollar figure. <laughs> And the pre-orders end on August 30th. 
yeah, you and it comes out March March of eighteen, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think I could ever do. I mean, granted, I've got probably three thousand dollars worth of Toys to Life stuff on the shelves in my other room, but I can't. Skylanders, sp- exactly. But I'm not going to spend eighty five bucks on one figure. Yeah, uh, especially like when I think about it, and I'll say, you know, oh man, that's two elite trainer boxes shipped. Like <laughs> maybe I'll just do that instead. But <laughs> it is a really cool figure, and I like that they're doing Lily and Cosmog. I think that's just a a nice kind of representation of you know this generation. All right, new Pokemon TCG stuff. Now this is interesting because you thought that this stuff had been released already or had been out in the wild for for a bit. But there was uh, two legendary battle decks that came out, one for Ho-Oh and one for Lugia. And you, you said you've seen these out in the wild. Yeah, at my, my local Walmart. Yeah, I wonder if, if Pokemon Center is behind the ball or if the, the retailers received it early or a combination of both. But these are like $20 deck boxes that, uh, you know, it's a 60-card deck, but it comes with two EXs. So... You know, the normal theme decks that they release are twelve ninety nine and don't have any EXs. This one's twenty bucks and two EXs. So you know, do the math, see if it's available, you know, see if that makes sense for for your wallet. But um you know, the the Ho O art you know, I just think that's a cool Pokemon, just you know, in general. So the Ho O art is, is pretty solid uh on that card. And the Lugia one is as well so you know 20 bucks for a deck i've become a fan of these theme decks because i've been streaming it on uh twitch tv slash gotta watch them all podcast um but that you know it's it's been a lot of fun for me to to play these decks and just kind of re reacquaint myself with the mechanics of the tcg and how to you know how to figure out strategies and how the deck works so maybe i'll pick these up and and stream it on uh on twitch but um we got to get you streaming man I know, I'm trying, man. Even if, even if you want to stream against me, we can that, do that too. Yeah, that'd be yes, that would be cool. You can kick my butt, but I guess if we play with theme decks, we could, we could be kind of on the on a equal uh, playing yeah, field. Yeah, I'm I'm down for anything. I've got a couple theme decks in there. All right, cool. So we'll we'll set something up. I'll we'll put that up on social media. But we'll do a uh, a little battle royale theme deck style. That'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. Finally, as far as the TCG is concerned, we have pre-orders have opened up on Pokemon Center to uh, for the sh- the Burning Shadows Elite Trainer Box and Booster Boxes. So the artwork on the Elite Trainer Box is really cool. Um, it features Necrozma on the sleeves and on the box. So really cool, you know, line art version of Necrozma. Very cool. But uh, I'm not sure what what's the actual release date for this stuff is, but. I think it comes out in August. August 4th. Okay. So it comes out on August 4th. You can pre-order that now. I always go the way of the Elite Trainer Box. I just think that's a good value. And, uh, you know, it's 40 bucks up on Pokemon Center, and typically the first week of release, you can get it on Amazon for, you know, 30 to 33 bucks prime. That's what I'll do for sure. But uh, other than that, that's about yeah, it. Yeah, it looks like July 22nd is... a. Uh... Is there should be some uh, some pre releases going on, so check Pokemon dot com slash events. I think that is. I enjoy those pre release events. I like getting the stamp the stamped card. Which yeah, is they are a sweet. lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's cool to be put on the spot to do like a draft tournament just like that with the the short you know the little small deck format is pretty fun. I know. Yeah, I know my my daughter and I enjoy it. Pokemon Sun and Moon. Uh, the video games, there is another Megastone giveaway going on right now. And you can get Septolite, Blazikanite, Swamperite, Camper Uptight, and Banatite Megastones by using the promo code Matsubusa or MatsubUSA or Matsubusa. So just look in the show notes so that way you can you can try to pronounce it for yourself. And uh, <laughs> you put that in, you know, it's a mystery gift thing. You put the mystery gift code in and you get a bunch of free stones. So they've been pushing hard on this. It's like every month there's something else, uh, some, another set of stones that's getting given away. So, you know, they're definitely pushing to get people to pull in you know, uh, non sun and moon Pokemon into sun and moon. Uh, so maybe that, you know, is kind of predictive of the future of what they're going for, but it seems like they're really pushing Pokemon bank and the transferring up of these Pokemon. They've, they've been pushing that pretty hard over the past couple of months. 
and I am definitely going to start playing uh, Moon again. I think I might. I was probably only about 15 hours in, not even, maybe 10 hours. Um, so uh, I think I'm just going to start fresh, so that way I can just regain my bearings. But I'll start well, reporting let me know. on that. Yeah. Let me know so I can get Sun, and then I'll play along with you. Well, I'll ship you. Uh, I'll ship you Melissa's copy of Sun. You can play that because she's done with it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we should uh, we should go through that together. I mean, I, I don't have you know a significant amount of time to play, but I would just want to get on that grind of being able to pick it up at least for a little bit every day, just to kind of chip away at it because I, I haven't been through a main series game in years and years. Um, you know, I played about half of of X, and uh, that's about it. So. I, I really want to just get through the game completely. I just want to experience the whole thing. That way, once Ultra Sun and Moon comes out, you know, I can I can revisit it and kind of worry about end game and things like that in that version. Yeah, definitely. I just want me a Salgaleo. Yeah. <laughs> He's quickly become one of my favorite legendaries or whatever they're calling it. Well, I saw you streaming, uh, playing with a with with them on a deck, right? You weren't using that card, yeah. Yeah. Metagross and Salgaleo. Yep. All right, let's jump into this episode. It is called The Ghost of Maiden's Peak. Original air date is October 2nd, 1998. Again, these are all back-to-back-to-back episodes. Like, uh, it's it's crazy to think that back in the day, this was like a a five-day-a-week thing, where it was Monday through Friday, new episodes of Pokemon every day. And I guess that's what kind of plays into the fact that there's so many episodes in this first season, but... Yeah, these these episodes were just the story just keeps going, and it's it's cool to see it told. You know, knowing that these were released on a day, you know, five times a week. This episode it uh it starts off with this really serene scene, big full moon. You see kind of like uh these these big rock formations over the ocean, and there's this one tall spire, and at the top of the spire is the rock is actually carved into uh, like a beautiful looking woman like it's actually built into the rock like it's carved into the natural formation of the rock and there's an actual flower like growing at the top of this this little rock thing and you kind of hear this spooky you know stereotypically ghost ghosty sounding voice come on and say i'm waiting for you come back to me return to your beloved you know so like you hear like this really spooky voice and just as he's saying that, kind of out of this this sculpture on the rock spire, a ghastly kind of jumps out towards the screen and just kind of repeats the same thing. Almost like you can't tell like if it's making fun of her or what, but it's kind of weird because it just you see this beautiful scene, this beautiful rock formation. It's like, oh, it's all nice. And then ghastly jumps in your face. I like, kinda like you know, kinda like shocked me for a second. But uh, it was cool seeing Ghastly. Like I like this that we're we're starting to see, you know, uh, a wide variety of Pokemon. It, it's just really cool that this was like this beautiful thing, and then all of a sudden they throw a Ghastly in your face, and it kind of you're kind of like, oh my gosh, like what the heck just happened? And that's when the title card comes up, and you know, and it says the Ghost of Maiden's Peak. They show Ash and the crew. They're on that ferry. They're heading away from Porta Vista, and you know, it, it comes out that they're heading towards a place called Maiden's Peak. And the, Misty kind of, you know, spots it out in the distance and says, all right, this this has got to be it. And they cut to poor Brock. And watching the show as an adult is very enjoyable, especially for episodes like this, because there's so many just like adult scenarios that, you know, the jokes can go both ways. But yeah, as we we missed them as as youngsters. <laughs> yes. You know, and, but they cut to Brock and he's like totally bummed out. And they're trying to figure out what's going on with Brock. And he's like, oh, I'm just bummed out that I missed out on summer. And Ash is like, what are you talking about? We had all these fantastic adventures. And Brock's like, yeah, yeah. If you're a, if you're a kid, all those adventures are, are, are great. He goes, but I, I'm just bummed I missed my whole summer. It's It was bikini season. And it cuts to this fan. Like, I, I'll probably throw it as like a little tiny image in the thumbnail on YouTube, but <laughs> they show like these three like beach babes in bikinis, you know, like Brock fantasizing about it. And he's like, oh, I missed out on bikini season and the girls now I'm going to have to wait a whole year to meet another girl. Like, you know, he was so <laughs> hyper focused on it the whole time. 
Uh, but just really funny to see like them actually showing like three sexy chicks in bikinis like in the episode. You're like, whoa, that's a lot of skin. And uh, after we missed the uh, the other episode with all the all the skin showing. Exactly, exactly. Did you, oh, did you ever watch the the lost episode? I didn't. I didn't get a chance okay, to. Yeah, you I've been working it. like open to close. So <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> time is has been not on my side. Oh, work, work. It's it's just really funny to see, you know, it, it's just a reminder that Brock is significantly older than Ash and Misty, and you kind of forget that sometimes because they, they just blend so well. But, you know, Brock was taking care of kids that were probably more along, you know, his brothers, you know, the younger brothers and sisters, they were probably more like the age of Ash and Misty. But you, you kind of forget that sometimes. But it's just really funny to see him, you know, fantasizing so hard. <laughs> on bikini girls <laughs> it's just really really funny they cut to team rocket team rocket's still you know getting towed by the ferry that they're in the barrel from the last episode and you hear this announcer at the port come on and say you know saying hey we you know welcome our travelers from Porta vista you know we invite you guys to check out our summer's end festival that's going on now so of course one thing that i've noticed with these these episodes as they go on is whenever they come to a new place, it's not just that they're arriving at the place, but there's always something going on at that place. So there's so much to do as soon as they get there. And it just gives so much depth to the story because they have things to do. They don't have to worry about selling the, the viewer on where they are. It's just like, Hey, this is where we are and this is what's going on. And, and they could just push you, push the story right along because Everybody's really excited about this Summer Zen Festival because the announcer just came on. So they're all fired up. Uh, Ash and Misty are all, you know, jazzed up. They're all running off to go. And poor Brock again is like, I guess I'll ride the Ferris wheel by myself. Like, he's really feeling bummed. You know, he needs he needs himself a lady. Uh, and <laughs> and as, he's, as he's kind of, you know, moping along, trudging along, the corner of his eye, he notices, like, this beautiful girl standing on you know, on the edge of the cliff, you know, overlooking the water and like, you know, his eyeballs turn into hearts and like, you know, bulge out of his head. And he's like, well, she's a knockout. Like he's totally into it. And just as he's looking at her, all the people from the ferry that they were just on kind of just like run off the boat and trample him down to the ground and, you know, just beat him down. He doesn't care because he's just like, he sees this beautiful girl and he's just hyper focused. Actually, Pikachu comes up to Brock also, and they're, they're just grilling the girl from a distance, and the girl mysteriously turns into a ghastly. So this is a callback to kind of what was going on in the intro of the episode. The girl turns into a ghastly and then disappears. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> like, you know, it's totally weird. Brock is like focused. He's like, I got to meet this girl because he's, you know, love at first sight, of course. Yeah, he's like, where did she go? <laughs> it's, just, it's just so, he's just such a doof. He, you know, he's so like over the top, like with the girls. It's, it's just, again, you know, stuff I would have missed as a kid. And, you know, my, me being an old fogey, you know, I wasn't a kid when I was watching this. I was a large, large kid, you know, that <laughs> shouldn't have been living home at home still, you know, at that time. But yeah. you know, it was it, it it's it's just so much it's so funny to to watch it now cuz it's just so many other levels there's stuff to laugh about. Yeah, you just pick up on things you didn't as a kid, so it's it's it rewatching it is it's brand new again. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, I I don't it's like I I should have watched I want to watch this episode with my son like I cuz he gets, you know, he's about to be 9, so he's at that age where he's so super embarrassed and I could bust his chops like, and, you know, make him, you know, turn red, like on a dime. Like I could just <laughs> say anything about any kind of girl or anything like that. And he just clams up. So I'd love to watch this episode with him and see what happens when he sees the bikini chicks. I'll be like, yeah, see, see what he does. <laughs> this is kind of, you know, the, the, the set, the scene is set. Yeah. So, so team rocket finally makes it to land. And then, uh, you know, Jesse and Meowth are super excited about the festival and not uh, because they're going to find they're going to they're like the festival brings tons of people and they're always dropping money. <laughs> they're like they're always dropping money. We're going to find like, it. We're going to get rich and just grab all the money that they drop. And uh, then James sees this beautiful girl 
and gets the googly eyes, just like Brock did. And then Jesse snaps him out of it, says, I can smell money. Like, we need to get going. And then Meowth <laughs> cuts in and he's like, all I smell is corn dogs. Well, the, the, this is like a festival, like a like an open street fair kind of thing that they have for this summer Zen thing. So I, I can see where Meowth is coming from. from and he's always focused on food. <laughs> always, always. And then it uh, it cuts to the festival. Everybody's, you know, celebrating, dancing. There's live music. But Brock is still bummed. He hears a voice trying to get his attention. He turns thinking it's the beautiful girl. And it's actually a little tiny old lady. And then she explains, beware of the beautiful girl. Yeah, she she gives this like weird, ominous kind of warning out of the blue, uh, which is really, you know, out of place, but it's just funny because it's a total setup for for Misty. Because... Misty's like <laughs> Oh, she must be talking about me. And the old lady turns to Misty saying if she was talking about an elegant young woman, not a scrawny little blabbermouth like you. Yeah, it was like total mic drop, and Misty is just like, what? <laughs> and, oh, <laughs> Ash comes in. Ash comes in and, like, uh, you know, takes a dig at Misty, too, when, when the the old lady's like, yeah, not some scrawny, you know, blabbermouth. And, and then Ash comes in and is like, yeah, super scrawny. <laughs> and then she slams Ash over the head like she usually does. She's like, let's get out of here and drags everyone off. Um, and then Team Rocket is crawling around with magnifying glasses, <laughs> trying to trying to find all the loose change on the ground. They can't seem to find anything until J- James sees a penny on the ground. And just as he's picking it up, the little old lady comes in. She's like, I've been watching James. And she like, she knows what, he's up to no good. <laughs> Says a woman will bring him to a poor fate. And this is another one of those areas that I remember when we were talking about the lobster a couple episodes back where it kind of yes. you know, is a glimpse of, you know, our world in Pokemon. Um when they when James finds the penny on the ground, it's it it's a US penny. Like it looks like a US penny, which is I thought was pretty interesting considering, you know, Japanese made cartoon and they use a US penny, which I thought was pretty interesting. I didn't even notice that. I'm going to yeah, have to yeah. go back and just check that out. Yep. The, the actual penny looks just like the back of a, a U.S. penny. So I thought that was really neat. That's, that's when so Officer, cool. Yeah. That's when Officer Jenny shows up because she sees, you know, James pick the penny up off the ground and and she's totally cool about it. And she goes, hey, I know what you guys are up to. You you know, you found some money. You know, the, the rules <laughs> here are no matter how small the amount, if you find money, it must be turned into the station. And, you know, Team Rocket is like, you know, taken back because obviously they're, they're career criminals. So they don't want it to have anything to do with the law. But, you know, now all of a sudden they have like a friendly cop saying, just come back with me to the station. We'll fill out the report. And they're like, know, no, we don't want to. We're, yeah, like, we're all set. No, thanks. And they just kind of like book off. You know, they take their they, I think they actually gave up the penny, but then they just book off. They cut back to the festival. And this is where the actual meat and potatoes of the episode come out. So everyone's gathered around this stage and, and they have like the I don't know if it's the mayor of um you know this 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 town or what but they they kind of break down why they're having this festival and this festival is a once a year celebration where they're um they're paying tribute to what they're calling uh the maiden and the maiden is the woman that's actually carved into the stone that you know had caught the uh caught you know had brought the ghastly out and all that kind of stuff so there's a painting that they have that they bring out once a year to commemorate her and that everyone can, you know, view and enjoy to, to celebrate her life. And then they go on to say that this woman was um, was around 2000 years ago. And the legend has it that she had to see that her lover off to uh, went off to war. So she sees him off in the ship. The ship goes out into the distance and she stays on this cliff waiting for her lover to make his way back from war. And the legend has it that she's waited so long that she actually turned to stone and kind of bonded with the mountain itself and became part of the rock. So it actually isn't 
you know, a carving of her on this, this spire. That's actually her trapped, you know, and converted into stone, which I thought was a really, really cool, you know, little tidbit of, of legend. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a cool story of true love. You know, it's the tragic story of love where, you know, I've, I'll wait my whole life for you. The things that are kind of cliche to say, but this, you know, fair maiden actually, you know, followed through. <laughs> it was like, I'll literally wait to death. I'll wait forever for you. And, you know, <laughs> waited so long that she actually turned to stone. And that's when Brock actually asks, well, where is this maiden's rock? And, you know, that's the, the guy points out this, you know, it's right over there. And Brock and James immediately kind of fall in love with the rock. You know, again, there's, they're seeing this girl and they can't get over how beautiful she is. And the design of the, the sculpture on the rock and, you know, the, the, the girl that Brock briefly saw standing on the edge of the cliff, you know, the art, she is beautiful. Like, it's really cool how they, they drew her in the, in the animation. She, you know, it's just a very, very elegant looking woman. Through all this, Meowth is, you know, has the great idea of, you know, if we're not going to be able to, you know, what, find any money, you know, lose change on the ground, you know, aren't paintings worth a lot of money? Like, why don't we steal this painting? I'm sure that'll be, you know, that'll be more than enough money we could sell this thing off for. Um, so, you know, Meowth has the right idea. Like, he's just, he's just always being the, the, the consummate criminal. Like, he's just like focused on what he needs to do wrong. Um, but Brock is, obsessed with this you know maiden and swears that she's going to come back and he identifies that the girl that he saw standing on the cliff in fact is the maiden from the rock and uh i you know as nighttime is approaching ash and misty are like yo you know brock come on you know you're really going to stay here all night and you know this has come full circle where the maiden was waiting all night for her lover to come back now Brock says, I just want to wait here to see if she comes back. I'll, you know, but don't worry. Go ahead. Go back to the Pokemon Center. You know, I'll, I'll be back before curfew. And this is the first mention of curfew, you know, here, but th- th- I think this is a recurring theme that we'll see late in later episodes as we go through the season. But, uh, they, they show back at the Pokemon Center and there's a cuckoo clock. And I, I want this cuckoo clock in real life because the, <laughs> the cuckoo clock opens up and a Pidgey pops out. And it's like <laughs> eleven o'clock <laughs> curfew time. Like it's just hilarious. And uh Brock still isn't back. And you know, they're the Pokemon Center doors start going like on like a uh, nuclear fallout lockdown. <laughs> like these these metal doors start closing from the ceiling. Um and they're like, wait a second, Brock is still outside and Officer Jenny uh won't let them go out to uh to look for him they're like nope curfew is curfew so sorry you know your buddy will be fine uh you know but you can't go out there the curfew is here and brock is unable to to make safe cover for the night and they have to leave him out there and then speaking of other people that are trapped out there they cut to team rocket and i don't know why but they're kind of in these sleeping bags suspended from a tree maybe they're trying to like keep themselves safe from any they're like hanging like cacunas they're hanging there's like the weirdest <laughs> thing um but you know meowth wakes up and he's like all right now's our chance we got to steal this painting and just as it just as they're about to you know go through with this plot the wind starts blowing like crazy and you know like tornado style winds and uh they're, the where they were hanging off these trees, Kakuna style in sleeping bags, happened to be right in front of what they're calling the Maiden's Shrine. So this is the shrine that they have towards this, you know, where they did this ceremony and everything in tribute to the Maiden. So the doors blow open. It's like total twister, you know, like winds are blowing like crazy. And the actual ghost of the Maiden walks out of this shrine. What what does she do? Doesn't she like put me off to sleep or something like that? Like she has powers. Like this is no yeah. You know, the re- <laughs> this is the real deal. So she kind of casts you know some kind of sleep on Meowth, and you know James wakes up, and the maiden walks up to James, and you know in this this ominous voice that we heard in the intro of the show, 
you know, she proclaims, I've been waiting a long time. Like, you know, there's some kind of weird residual haunting going on where, you know, (laughs) she's just repeating herself. Like, is this like on a on a rinse repeat cycle because it's a reoccurring haunting or what? But she comes out and kind of talks about and says, like, she's been waiting a long time, like as if she was talking as if James were the lover that she's been waiting for. What, I don't remember what James actually does, but I know the maiden ends up haunting over to where Brock was and kind of says the same thing. I've been waiting so long. I've been waiting so long. So this 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 ghost of this maiden is very, very confused. And uh, it just kind of cuts. You know, that's it. And, and Jesse, uh, uh, James and Brock are just like totally freaked out and totally out of it. So the next morning comes and Ash and Misty are like, you know, wigging out trying to find Brock and Jesse and Mouth are doing the same thing for James. Uh, and because they're both kind of, you know, have been put under this love spell or something from this ghost, they're just completely infatuated and they, they're just completely obsessed. Oh, commercial break. Who's that Pokemon? It's Ghastly. Spoilers. Ghastly. Ghastly. Um. <laughs> All right, so right after that, uh, they they encounter each other. They see each other, and Ash is like, yuck, and Jesse's like, double yuck. And uh, Jesse does the modder herself uh, and starts doing James's parts. Um, I love how she the- imitates him. So funny. Yeah, I know. And then, uh, like, so halfway through the motto, you hear um, James going, to protect all evil. <laughs> <laughs> like, super, super ominous. And then they're like, Who's inside the shrine? And so after you can hear, you know, James ominously, who's inside the shrine, they're standing around. James is pushed out of the house, and then Brock pops out too. And the old lady comes and says, She knew it. They both have seen the ghost of the maiden. And Ash, is, Ash orders Pikachu to shock them, because he thinks they're possessed. So the shock gets their attention, but the old lady says, All men that fall under the maiden's spell end up acting like zombies, blabbling like idiots. And that's exactly how they're acting. They're like totally just... Oh, so beautiful. Yeah, they're just... (laughs) (laughs) It's literally like Love Potion number 9 style. Like they're just absolutely head over heels and they're hyper-focused. They're just in love. And then James and Brock are still not all right. The old lady says, there's only one thing you can do. And she starts like hustling at dead ghost stickers. Yeah. They're, uh, they're forced to buy them. Well, it's like she has these, like, you're, you're thinking, if is this her plan all along? So she knew that the, that people were going to get put under the spell from this ghost. And she's like, there's only one thing to do. You have to buy these anti-ghost stickers. This is her hard hustle from the beginning. And <laughs> it's like, before you know it, she's like selling out hundreds of these stickers to Ash and them as they're putting these stickers all over the place trying to, you know, ward off the, the spirits. Um, but this was her hustle the whole time. I knew it. I knew she was she was dirty. Didn't they even put the stickers on themselves, on Brock and James? Yes. Okay. Um, and then, the you know, the wind picks up and blows all the stickers away as if, you know, they were nothing. Um, the maiden's ghost comes back. The maiden says she has been waiting to meet you to Brock. And then Brock, Brock starts floating in the air. Yeah, he's actually like he's... levitating, like sitting Indian style, like cross legs <laughs> and just kind of like is in this force field, like floats through the air. Yeah, and then James is also getting pulled away. And he's like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Um, you know, and Jess, Jesse, you know, mentions the free stickers. And she's like, well, we got them for free. So I guess you get what you pay for. Yeah, they were like a, they were a buy one get one deal. So they let Ash and them pay for their set of stickers for Brock, and then the <laughs> Team Rocket ends up walking away with the free set that they use for James. So they didn't actually have to pay anything. So it wasn't that big a deal that the wind just blew off everything. You know, they just did with you know trying to ward off these demons or whatever the heck is going on, which didn't work. You know, and like so Brock's in the air. He's totally fine, getting pulled towards the ghost. And then James wants nothing to do with it. Jesse even, like, has to fire a bazooka at the ghost, and it does nothing. Yeah, like, wafts through the ghost's, like, uh, ectoplasm or something. Just kind of, like, smoky ghosts. The rocket just, like, fires right through it. (laughs) 
and James is uh is able to swim back and is happy that Jesse actually cares about him. Jesse says it's not about him, but that she hates girls like this. Yeah, she's like the uh, you know, this girl is so clingy. Like she's just like she just thinks that she's all that. Again, she, it's just like a jealousy thing, and like this this plays into the the fleshing out of the Jesse and James relationship that we've been seeing over the past couple episodes. It's like you know, James is still gaga and hung up that Jesse actually cares, and it's just like that's come out a couple times in the past few episodes. So it's just a weird dynamic between those two. You never know what the heck is going on. Yeah, I know. And, uh, yeah, she just hates girls that like to wait around for their man like a pet. She says, there are many other fish in the sea. (laughs) And then, uh, you know, the maiden gets upset that Jesse's interfering and sends a horde of skull ghosts out to get them. Yo, this is, this is a scary little scene. Like this was, this was an intense animation. So, you know, like you said, uh, a horde of skulls, but, it's it's like really scarily drawn like it's it's pretty spooky the way they they play it out like i was like oh my god like if i was if i was six years old watching this i might be like mommy yeah and it's like they're they're not you know they're not pokemon they're clearly ghosts right like, yeah yeah like i like i believe in ghosts and that's scary yeah. well i mean like the ghosts that they showed those are scary <laughs> <laughs> um and Ash thinks, you know, it is a Pokemon and pulls out the Pokedex, but no entry is found. So leading leading us to believe that they are actually ghosts and like not yeah, okay. Everyone kind of gets freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> and he continues to scan and scan and finally pulls up a Ghastly once the Dex is pointed at the Maiden. Right. So clearly there's something going on with the Maiden and, uh, you know, in the Maiden's, you know, elegantly ominous, you know, beautiful voice, ghostly voice. It says, you know, like you finally figured it out. You know, sometimes I'm a 2000 year old maiden, sometimes a mysterious old woman, but no matter what, I'll always be awfully ghastly. So it kind of comes out and, you know, ghastly blows its cover that, uh, this whole time ghastly has not only been himself, but also the maiden's ghost and also the mean old lady. So, Ghastly is kind of all over the place here, um, which is which is bizarre. Yeah, so it's like, what is he doing with all that money? He just hustled from. Oh, yeah. so it's not the old lady; it's Ghastly <laughs> hustling all this money. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, these Pokemon got side hustles, and it's it's what's what's interesting too is this is, you know, we've seen Pokemon that only communicate with their name. We have Pokemon like Meowth that can talk. Now we have the Ghastly that can can communicate in English doesn't need subtitles so it's been talking through this whole thing uh so that's a whole another interesting thing to see but as soon as you know the ash you know actually has confer- confirmation that this is a pokemon there's ghastly he's ready to fight like he's ready for the battle you know immediately will you know calls out ghastly and says yeah let's do this and ghastly says you know my hypnotic power works on pokemon too and uh, summons a giant. Now, this is what's crazy because this is like some true magical stuff that happens <laughs> during this battle scene because the Ghastly actually summons a giant mousetrap and he calls it to attack Ash's rodent, meaning Pikachu. So this giant fully, you know, visualized mousetrap is actually like snapping away, chasing Pikachu down. Uh, Meowth actually jumps in. And Ghastly pulls the most fantastic kitty attack ever and creates a ghost ball that the cat could play with. And it totally distracts me out. It's just like, <laughs> oh, pretty ball. And uh, Jesse sends Ekans out. And Ghastly's like, yo, the biggest, uh, the number one enemy of a, of a snake is a mongoose. You know, snake's natural enemy. So it creates this giant mongoose thing uh, that, you know, completely wards off Ekans. The first episode where you finally see Zigzangoose. Yeah, exactly, no. right? <laughs> or <laughs> or uh what's the uh the, the Gen seven uh Young Goose, the Trump Trump Pokemon? <laughs> the Young Goose. Young Goose? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's um Gumshoes. Yeah, that's the evolved. Young yep. Goose. Yep. Okay, uh, yeah, there but, you go. <laughs> you know, Je- Jesse's in you know, she's done. She's like calls in for James to tell, you know, telling him like, yo, it's your turn. Like, what are you going to do? 
and then James calls out coughing to do a poison gas attack, but that giant mongoose that was just attacking Ekans now has a gas mask on and kind of stomps right on coughing. So all these Pokemon are, are attacking and nothing is working. Uh, Ash even calls out Charmander. Ghastly creates a giant fire extinguisher and just blasts it onto Charmander. He calls out Squirtle and Bulbasaur. And I absolutely love this. So Ghastly then, to scare them, so Ghastly creates their, their full evolution. So he brings out a Blastoise and a Venusaur and combines them together to create what he calls a Venustoise, which is this, you know, hybrid version of the Pokemon. Now, it was very interesting when I saw this because one of the things that my son loves looking up on the internet, and there's a huge following for this, is these hybrid Pokemon where a digital artist will take two different Pokemon and blend them together to create a new Pokemon. So this is actually a thing, and they give them silly names to kind of play off, you know, the two that they're combining. But I, I thought that was really funny because that's actually a, a, a subsect of you know Pokemon fandom was these these weird hybrid you know uh, creations. But it creates this giant thing that just scares the crap out of Bulbasaur and Squirtle, so they kind of run off. And Ash is really feeling the burn. He's like, you know, I can't do this. You know, this Ghastly is too strong. And that's when this episode takes, like, a holy turn, which is absolutely hilarious. Misty comes jumping out of nowhere, holding up a cross, and she's like, how about this? And Ash is like, what? What What are you doing? What is that? And she's like, I got a cross. She's like, and I also have garlic, a wooden stake, and a hammer. <laughs> so she's like, you know, straight going the, the undead route here, you know, knows that this is, this is a, a dead Pokemon. And Gasly is totally not impressed and says, like, what, what do you think I am? I'm not a vampire. Like, you know, are you going to stake me or something? But just as that's happening, you know, the, sh- the bells that are, I guess, at the top of the shrine start ringing. And Gasly kind of, you know, has to hightail it. And he's like, I can't do this. I can't, you know, I, ha- I hate the sun. You know, I have to leave. You know, I got to go. It's going to be sunrise. I'll see you next year. And... He even leaves with this very, very haunting thing saying, you know, I'll see you next year and the maiden's ghost and the old lady will be back. And the sun comes out and Gasly's gone. And it's like, just like that, you had all this madness and you don't even realize that all this is transpiring over the course of this night, you know. And uh, once the sun comes out, Gasly can't handle it. So it's like, you know, he's as quick as all this madness happened. Gasly is just gone. You're going to have to wait till next year. And if you're going to want to, if you want to defeat Gasly, you're going to have to wait a whole nother year because he's not coming out till the next festival. Uh, and just kind of settles down significantly after that. It's just really bizarre. And it cuts to a really nice ceremony that I guess the villagers do every year to, uh, celebrate the send off of the spirits and what they do is they make these little boats with candles in them and they let them off in the water and the goal of that is to you know if there's any uh what do they say if there's any uh lost travelers or lost spirits these boats the current will help them uh follow them home you know get them home to where they need to be and the irony here is they actually show the the true ghost of the maiden kind of following one of these little boats you know down the water um, and then the the ghost actually turns into the old lady at that point. Um, and Ghastly comes back and says, you know, the, the summer is over, but the legend will live on. They cut to the actual, the rock again, like the beautiful sculpture of the maiden. And the ghost comes out. This time the ghost is in full color. So you can really visualize what the actual maiden looked like in human form. Uh, and it actually thanks Ghastly, you know, and says, you know, thank you for, for doing this and letting this legend live on. And Ghastly, re- you know, it's my pleasure. You know, he en- I enjoy keeping these old legends alive. And then he goes, and also, if I can make a few bucks in the meantime while I'm doing it, I might as well do that as well. And uh, she says, we're going to wait till the next festival for my love to return. And uh, it's it's it kind of takes this turn where you're like, 
wait a second, maybe Gasly isn't a bad guy after all. Like, you know, what's going on here? Did he do this just to, you know, did he mess with Ash and Team Rocket and the whole thing with making people fall in love? Like, is that just part of what the ghost wants to begin with? But it kind of makes it seem like, well, maybe maybe Gasly isn't isn't really bad after all, which I thought was a cool way to kind of spin the ending of the episode because it's like the whole time you're thinking that Gasly is the villain. When really, you know, he's the one that's, if it wasn't for Gasly, they wouldn't be able to have these celebrations in the festival like they do because he kind of is the one that's bringing all that to life. I thought that was kind of a cool way to, to spin it. And of course, they have to follow up with Brock with, you know, staring off at the, the ghost of the maiden saying, you know, man, if you're only 2000 years younger, you're like maybe next year. I like how they, they really wrap up the episode. It kind of reminded me of the end of Return of the Jedi when the Ewoks are like having like a whole village wide celebration. <laughs> like every, <laughs> everyone in the whole village is like dancing and Team Rocket's wearing kimonos and they're like banging on the drums. Uh, oh yeah, there's a really cool little, another little, uh, little teaser here where they show Team Rocket kind of, you know, celebrating and they're, they're, they're playing the drums. They're wearing kimonos and they cut to Misty wearing a kimono and she has her hair down and she looks gorgeous. And, uh, <laughs> Ash is, Ash is kind of like dumbfounded for a quick second. And, um, you know, just in celebration, Misty's like, come on, Ash, let's dance. And that wraps up the episode. The narrator comes on and, uh, <laughs> calls out Brock and says he'll have to wait another year. You know, and, and the show wraps up. So it's like, I don't know. It was, it was a very interesting, like, final five minutes of the episode because it went from, oh my gosh, the, uh, you know, the heroes are in trouble. They're under attack by Ghastly and all this crazy stuff is happening to, you know, them having to come to the realization of, hey, this is just a reoccurring theme for this festival. And next year, this entire cycle is going to happen again, you know, probably Groundhog's Day style. Of, you know, the ghosts will come back, the maiden's ghost will come back, the old lady will come back, and ultimately Ghastly will be back. So <laughs> just very interesting way to, that they kind of like put a spin. It's like the whole episode took a, took a turn right at the end, but in a weird way where you actually feel for Ghastly and you're like, all right, maybe, maybe he's all right. Interesting episode. Um, you know, the story must go on. So that, you know, they, they're, they're now going to be leaving Maiden's Peak. We don't know where they're going to be going next. It went from, them stopping at Maiden's Peak to them being able to have this this one day celebration to them having to leave right away. So it's like this is a constant theme of the travel must go on. Like and no matter what happens, for better or for worse, you know, they must trudge on. So it's like, you know, the story, the story shall continue. So interesting way to end the episode. Uh, I definitely enjoyed the fact that they're really fleshing out uh, the relationship between Jesse and James, I think that's kind of bizarre. You know, it's like as an adult, we can kind of see what's going on there behind the scenes a little bit. As a kid, it would go right over a kid's head. So yep. it's kind of cool that they're they're <laughs> fleshing that out. And I, I just love James. He's just my favorite character. It's just it's just so funny. Yeah, interesting episode, man. I enjoyed it. And what were, what were your final thoughts on the episode? I loved it. Cool, right? It was it was it was very interesting. I mean, you know, it that whole aspect of like realizing like it's a ghost is it real what's not real yeah. and then like them i remember playing the game way back when and it's like facing your first ghastly you know half your moves like you'd have fighting moves or something and they wouldn't they wouldn't do anything they'd just be right. like you use tackle it does nothing you know because it's a physical move yep and just realizing that like yes it is difficult to beat a ghastly unless you know what you're doing and they kind of played into that with the episode here where, you know, no matter what attacks these Pokemon were throwing at it, and again, physical moves, it's just the ghastly, you know, nothing could hurt it. And they just felt so discouraged because they, you know, they hadn't faced that before, so they didn't know what to do. Right. All right. Rumor has it that uh, you have a booster to open, as do I. I think so. Yes, I do. I, I have a... <laughs> that is the sound of a booster. Yes, I, I have I have a Sun and Moon booster. Just a base set, Sun and Moon? A, a base set, Sun and Moon. Me too. All right, cool. Mine's got a uh, Incineroar. I think that's what it's called. Yes. The big me, red cat. Yes, me too. The big red <laughs> awesome. cat. Yes. 
Litton's final form. All right, so I'll go first here. I have a Trainer Repel, Corsola, Professor Kikui. I like this card. I was using this card in uh, on the stream last week. Um, it's in a couple of the Sun and Moon theme decks, so I like that card. Stuffle, Eevee. Can't go wrong with an Eevee. Eevee has a very derpy face on this picture, though. Uh, Dewpiter, Poliwag, Paris. My reverse is a Snubble. And my rare is a non hollow crabominable. So no, nothing nothing shiny for me, but I did get a derpy Eevee, so I'm kind of satisfied with that. All right, my turn. All right, we've got, to start it off, we got a Growlithe. I got a Surskit. Fomantis. Morlul. Morlul. I got a Stoutlin. A big Molasada. Mol- Molasada. Sounds like Mol- Melissa. Melissa. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got a Brion. A Crocorock. A Sandy Gast. A Poplio Reverse Hollow. What was my rare? Oh, my rare was a Stoutland. Wow. Oh, I'm, I did that pack backwards then. Dude, but I messed an, up somewhere. But another week with uh, with nothing nothing too crazy. Nothing good. <laughs> Man. We need to buy from different retailer, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I've been buying mine from, uh, from GameStop, so no shout out yeah, for I'm... them. No. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still uh I'm still going off of elite trainer boosters that I've had just kind of banked for a while. Yeah, I got to do that again. Yeah, it's the way to go. That's the way to go. But we're we're so due. We are so due. Uh check out uh check out our Instagram on Mondays and Fridays. Adam's been rocking with uh doing some some booster openings and uh Insta booster. Insta boosters. You're due, man. You are so due for for EX or GX or something like that. I know, at least on the podcast. I mean, I'm open in some on on the Insta Boosters, but it's not the same. I want it live. Yeah. <laughs> but uh that's pretty much the show, man. I'm going to uh, I'm going to run through a couple housekeeping things real quick. Um you can find everything about the show, all our links, everything like that at gottawatchemall.com. You can email us at gottawatchemallpodcast at gmail.com. I uh, want to shout out a couple people. Seth Hay for creating our logo and graphics. Grimecraft for our providing our intro music. Chippercrit for providing the outro music. One of the number one, the number one thing you could do to help out the podcast at this point right now is to leave us a review in iTunes. They're gonna be, there's going to be a link in the show notes. Take two minutes, leave us a review. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. And uh, on Twitter, we can be found at, at Gotta Watch Them All. I am personally Proud Gamer Tweet. Adam, you on Twitter, where can they find you? Phoenix back, the number four fire. And I will put a link to that in the show notes as well. That is a show. Wait, wait, wait. Today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, release day. Release day. We're going to release this on Tuesday. And it's somebody's birthday. Yep. Melissa. Happy birthday, Melissa. Yay, today's Melissa's birthday. Well, the day, we're, we're, we're celebrating this in, in the past right now, but yes, this will be released on Tuesday the 27th, so happy birthday, Melissa. I hope you have a great day. That's going to be a show. Thank you very much. Thanks for everyone for checking us out, and uh, hope to see you guys next week. That's Thanks it. for listening. Peace!